President Obama has announced with some fanfare that he is launching an urgent investigation into how it came about that on Christmas Day, a young Nigerian tried to blow up a plane flying into Detroit with some 300 people aboard. In furtherance of what that young man believed was his obligation under the theopolitical legal program, authoritative Islam calls Sharia. I would respectfully suggest that if the president wants to get to the bottom of this, wants to understand how such a thing almost happened, he would be well advised to start by looking in the mirror. Not that the president was directly apprised of this plot or failed in a direct way to prevent it. But the problem with Sharia is that it obliges its adherents to engage in jihad. It leaves up to them the decision whether it's practicable to engage in the preferable form, namely the violent, terrifying form, or whether circumstances will make that either unworkable or counterproductive, in which case the obligation is still to engage in jihad, but through more of what Robert Spencer calls stealthy means, the sort that the Muslim Brotherhood engages in every day here in the United States. My point is that what we're witnessing and what the president needs not only to look at and understand and take responsibility for is the fact that increasingly jihadists around the world perceive it is practicable, not only possible but productive for them to engage in the violent kind of attacks inside the United States. It is for that reason, folks, that we've seen an order of magnitude greater number of these kinds of attacks or attempted attacks in our country in 2009 alone, some 14, all mounted by people who, like this Nigerian, believed God directed them, pursuant to Sharia, to perform mass murder. If the president fails to take responsibility for actions that have contributed to this calculation, actions like his assault on our intelligence community, most obvious in the immediate aftermath of this episode, where, in fairness, some blame certainly is to be assigned to agencies that fail to move information about this Nigerian terrorist into the proper channels to keep him out of American airspace. But to the extent that the president has also cleared the way for the prosecution of intelligence officials in connection with interrogation, to the extent he has made much of his determination come what may to close the most secure facility for housing these terrorists. He has enabled some numbers of these terrorists to be sent back to Yemen, the very place this Nigerian apparently got his training and his bomb, from which we will see assuredly more of these former Guantanamo Bay detainees making the quick trip back to the battlefield. And not just with the purpose of killing Americans someplace else, but as we saw in this instance, sadly, 
as a result of a foolish decision made by President Obama's predecessor, George W. Bush, to release two, in particular, of these Saudi detainees to uh, the Saudi rehabilitation program from which they migrated into the Yemen battle space. These are all the sorts of things that are encouraging our enemies to believe. Not only that time is on their side, but that they're winning. And that this is an opportune moment to ramp up the violent kind of jihad that they have elected to wage against us. Matters are made worse, however, by the fact that at the same moment, we are continuing to be subjected to an insidious and dangerous influence operation being mounted by those who profess to eschew this violent jihad, but who favor the stealthy kind. Specifically, I'm speaking of virtually every Muslim American organization in this country, certainly of any prominence. They all happen to be either very directly or at some remove tied to the Muslim Brotherhood. And as we've talked about here before, but it bears repeating at every turn, the mission of the Muslim Brotherhood in America is to destroy Western civilization from within by its own miserable hand. That's a direct quote from a mission statement the brothers put together back in 1991. So the combination of jihadists that feel emboldened by, among other things, actions taken by the President of the United States or the fecklessness of his Homeland Security Secretary or the submission of our military or our intelligence services or our FBI to what some call political correctness. I call it Sharia. Compounded by the reliance that all of those folks are placing on the wisdom and insights of the Muslim Brotherhood, which now dominate commentary on what one can and can't say, what one can and can't think, what one can and can't do to counter Sharia, whether it's in our media, whether it's in our academic institutions, whether it's in our prisons, whether it's in our military chaplain program, whether it's in our government. These Muslim brothers are waging stealth jihad just as surely as Al-Qaeda and its ilk are waging violent jihad for the same purpose, the destruction of Western civilization and America from within, if possible, from without, if necessary, through violent means, if possible, through stealthy means, if not. This is the crux of the matter. And as the president conducts this investigation, as he sends bureaucrats and political analysts and Muslim Brotherhood operatives and others scurrying about to give him a report as to what went wrong and what should be done about it, he must start with an appropriate diagnosis of the nature of the problem that we are confronting this theo-political legal program, this totalitarian ideology, this repressive and seditious code, and that those who adhere to it, not all Muslims, thank God, but quite a number of them, in virtually all of the mosques in this country, for example, and as I said, in all of the prominent Muslim American organizations, those Muslim brothers must no longer be allowed to disinform and corrupt our understanding of the threat. If at the end of the day, the investigation, the inquiry, the study, the analysis, whatever he calls it, that the president is now commissioned, fails 
to do those sorts of vital first principle investigations, analyses of the nature of the enemy and what animates them. It must be done independently. In the Cold War, the then director of the Central Intelligence Agency, a gentleman by the name of George Herbert Walker Bush, commissioned an outside team of experts, most of whom were known for their deep skepticism about the official assessments of the Soviet Union, the last horrific totalitarian empire and, and ideology we confronted. That group, known as Team B, was given access to all of the classified information the intelligence agencies of the United States government had compiled about the Soviet Union, its military program, its order of battle, and so on. At the end of the day, we now know, thanks to hindsight, Team B got it right. Team B accurately understood the threat and warned of the implications of allowing it to continue to metastasize in the absence of American military and other kinds of investment and actions. Ronald Reagan came along and implemented, basically, the Team B assessment and program. We need, if it cannot be done, if it will not be done under the Obama administration, a similar kind of Team B now, urgently, because what will happen in its absence, assuredly, is the death of more Americans, the needless and potentially very costly death and destruction in this country that those who adhere to Sharia are convinced Allah expects of them. We must not let that happen. Thanks for your help in ensuring that it doesn't. Happy New Year.